In a world where you're having to wait longer and longer for the latest and greatest cars, what's a viable alternative that you can have in an instant? For an off-road loving country, it comes from a brand that first entered the Australian market over 20 years ago and cost less than key rivals at just under $50,000. This is the 2021 Sangyong Rexton ELX. Yes, it's a Korean brand that never quite made it to the mainstream, but let's take a closer look and I'll explain why it's worthy of your attention. You see, while the rest of Australia sits on waiting lists for big Australia tourists such as the Toyota Prado, the Rexton exists as the available and affordable alternative. The Rexton was updated earlier in 2021 and the range was rationalised to two variants. This ELX grade car here is the entry level model and costs $47,990 drive away. Both the ELX and Ultimate specs are powered by a 2.2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder diesel engine mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission. Outputs are rated at 148 kilowatts and 441 newton meters, with the Rexon also featuring off road tech including low range four wheel drive and an auto locking rear differential. It also has the ability to tow up to 3.5 tonnes. Based on the Muso dual cab utility, the 7 seat Rexton changes it up with its large grille, high set headlights and 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped in Kumo tyres. Sangyong has played it relatively safe design wise, the styling neither stands out nor detracts. The ELX grade is highlighted by a synthetic leather upholstery, a fully digital instrument cluster, heated and ventilated front seats, dual zone climate, power seat adjustment, and an 8 inch infotainment screen with smartphone mirroring. At the back, the Rexon scores LED taillights and a regular boot. You'll have to step up to the ultimate grade to get an electric tailgate. The boot offers 641 litres of space with the second row of seating in place. If you've got something bigger or longer, the second row of seats can drop to afford a full 1806 litres of space. Backseat dwellers should be pretty pleased with the amount of room on offer in the second row. There's good headroom, excellent knee room, and more than enough ample space for your feet. For added comfort, this center armrest folds down to reveal two cup holders. There's air vents in the back here and two USB ports. The rear seats are reclinable, and the seats can also be heated using this button on the door. It's somewhat of a struggle for adults to slip into the third row. Once you're back here, there's enough space that you don't feel claustrophobic. That said, the space is best reserved for kids or short journeys only. Of note, there are next to no amenities back here. The only thing there is, is a 12 volt outlet. Common to both variants in the range is safety kit, including autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, hill descent control, and driver attention monitoring. Now the interior does come as a bit of a surprise, with an impressively presented array of screens, materials and equipment. In the front seat, the Rexon presents a space as nice as any of the other large off-road focused SUVs. Materials used throughout the cabin is good, depending on where you touch, though I'm not a fan of this steering wheel which feels a little awkward in hand, especially this D part at the bottom. While we're on the steering wheel, there are a few blank buttons which feel indicative of decontenting. There's plentiful storage for phones, wallets, drinks and the like, while all key controls are found on the dash or centre console. These fake leather seats are comfy for both around town duties and when you're on longer trips. But for an interior that is otherwise punching above its weight, the Rexon is let down by a basic infotainment system. It lacks features and functionality, especially navigation, sometimes stumbles between different menu systems and the paired sound system is decidedly average. Not to mention, the design looks like it's been pinched from a basic smartphone. On the plus side, it does cater to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can choose your own adventure there. While the screen in the middle is ordinary, the digital instrument cluster ahead of the driver is great. There are multiple displays to choose from, key information is displayed clearly, and you've got a nice big speed readout. Just to explain what's down here by the shifter, the car has a number of drive modes, has a parking assistance function, and this dial here controls the 4x4 system. To get a better grasp of what the Rexon's actually like, let's hit the road. Diesel clatter aside, the Rexon fires up without fuss and remains quiet and composed on longer touring drives, which you wouldn't typically expect from a cheaper alternative. The Rexon gets up to speed relatively quickly and stocks adequate overtaking power for when it's needed. Responsiveness of the powertrain is good, and the automatic gearbox is smart and obedient to throttle inputs. There's good vision about the cabin and a nice high perch to see above the road from. 
The steering has a syrupy weight to it, though it's devoid of too much feel. There's good grip from the Kumo tyres, even through the wet and dry. To recap on the key figures, the Rexon sends 148 kilowatts and 441 newton meters through an 8-speed automatic transmission paired to a selectable four-wheel drive system. We've spent a bit of time on gravel roads over the last week, and suspension travel and road clearance has not been much of an issue. Ride control is nice and comfortable over potted roads, and it handles a speed hump without much of an issue. Despite its big body, there's confidence to the way the Rexon rounds corners. You don't get that overly floaty or top-heavy feeling. Fuel use is claimed at 8.7 litres per 100 kilometres, though we recorded a 9.2 rating on our combined week. That's actually not too bad for a large SUV. Well, its interior is spacious and decently equipped, the power plant is more than adequate, and the driving experience exceeds expectation. In all, the Rexon impresses both on the road and inside the cabin. For a driveway price less than $50,000, it flies under the radar as a genuinely capable alternative to segment bests. There are some negatives such as the average infotainment system, but the Korean brand obviously backs its product with a strong 7-year warranty and affordable service pricing. It might not have the same showroom appeal as a Toyota Prado or Ford Everest, but the Sangyong's value shouldn't be overlooked for buyers looking for the best deal. Of course, you can ask us questions in the comments below or read up on everything there is to know about the 2021 Sangyong Rexton ELX over at drive.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest content and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we upload.